Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Senator Collins, Senator McCain, Senator Bennett. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here today to discuss the results of our first bi-monthly review of the use of the funds by selected states and localities. As I mentioned uh, to this committee on March the 5th, uh, when we were here to ask to outline our plans, our review focused on 16 states and the District of Columbia across the nation that will account for about two-thirds of the uh, total amount of money that's allocated by the federal government to states and localities. Uh, and I also mentioned that we were going to follow these 16 states in the district over the next two or three years to do a longitudinal study of how they use the money, but also what the impact of the act was be, uh, had been and whether or not we were, it was going to achieve its objectives. This first uh, chart explains why a longitudinal study is important. This is the estimated uh, outlay, federal outlays by CBO and other information we have put together as to when the federal monies will be uh, allocated to the states and localities. And as you can see, there's a, a ramp up here in uh, fiscal 2009, but a lot of the funding uh, will be spent in 2010 and 2011 and in uh, the ensuing years. Now, as the next chart uh, will show, for this fiscal year, fiscal year 2009, uh, they, there will be uh, about uh, $49 billion allocated to the states and localities. Most of that, 90% of that, will be in the health area, education, and transportation. Now, over time, as you can see, this chart compares fiscal 2009 to 2012. Uh, the composition of the federal spending will change. While a large part, 64%, this fiscal year will be spent in health care, as represented by the red piece of the pie, by 2012, that will be only about 1%. That's because the increased federal share of the Medicaid program is for a 27-month period uh, that will end at the end of 2010. Uh, and you can also see that the amount of money that's going into community development energy and environment will increase along with the transportation spending as new programs come online, the broadband program, high-speed rail program, uh, and some of the uh, housing community development initiatives. Now, our first bi-monthly review, therefore, focused on the three programs where there is the most amount of money to be spent during fiscal year 2009, the Medicaid uh, program, the highway program, uh, in the state stabilization fund. Now, in the Medicaid program, the 16 states in the district that we uh, looked at received an allocation from CMS at the federal level about $16.9 billion. As of uh, uh, April 1st, they had drawn down $7.96 billion of that, or about 47% of the total amount of money that was available. They reported using the money to sustain uh, eligibility uh, requirements for uh, the Medicaid population within the states and also to help them meet increased caseload demands. As we all know, during economic downturns, other people need to uh, come onto the Medicaid rolls, and so they were able to do that. Now, the federal share increased quite a bit. In the states that we looked at, it went from 79 percent increase in Iowa to 11.5 uh, or almost 11.6 percent increase in California. So the federal share has increased significantly as a result of legislation. That also may mean in some states they're able to reduce their share, thereby making funds available for other purposes. And some states have reported being able to do that and using that to avoid layoffs in other areas or to offset general fund deficits. And this uh, helps to prevent other uh, actions that might be detrimental to economic recovery. Now, in the transportation area, uh, money was made available to the, to the 17 jurisdictions that we looked at, about $15.5 billion. As of uh, the middle of this month, about uh, $3.3 billion had been obligated. Now, obligated in this sense means that the federal government and the states have agreed on the projects to be funded. Many of these are still out for bid during the April-May time frame, while few states, Mississippi and Iowa, among our sample, had actually uh, let contracts to begin work. Most of the other 
states are in the process of uh, completing the competitive bidding process and then be awarding the money. And, and so, so far, there hasn't been a significant amount of Recovery Act funds spent yet for the highway programs. But as you mentioned, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, the pipeline is there. Uh, the projects that have been agreed to by the federal and state local governments for the jurisdictions we're looking at, there were over 950 projects that had already been approved. And so this is moving through the system and I think will have the uh, desired effect. Now, on the State Stabilization Fund, this is a new program, about 81.8 percent of the money in the State Stabilization Fund is to be used for education uh, purposes. 18.2 uh, percent can be used for basic government services, including education. Uh, now, about a little over $20 billion have been allocated to the 17 jurisdictions that we looked at, but in order to be able to use the, this money, States have to submit an application to the Education Department. The Education Department reviews it, uh, and then uh, the states, once they determine it's complete, they can move forward. Now, among the jurisdictions that we looked at, uh, two have submitted their applications and have the review completed by the Education Department. Last Friday, the Education Department gave the okay to California, and this past Monday to Illinois. Uh, other states are in various processes of preparing their applications and submitting them to the Education Department uh, for review. Now, in addition to looking at the uses of the funds, we also looked at the uh, efforts being made by the states to ensure that there are proper safeguards and proper accountability mechanisms put in place. Uh, here, we were pleased to see the states were paying very close attention to their new responsibilities here. They were appointing... Uh, people to uh, focus on this program full-time, either as a Recovery Act czar or special uh, person associated with it. They were trying to assess what some of the internal control risks were up front, as you mentioned, Senator Collins. Uh, and there are some risks. Uh, some of the prior audit work and other things done note some areas where subrecipients haven't been monitored in the past as they need to be, but people were trying to put in place proper uh, improvements to ensure that uh, those risks were mitigated. Now here we found exactly what was mentioned uh, by both uh, you, Senator Lieberman, and Senator Collins in your opening statements. Most of the states have been ex under fiscal stress and they've cut back uh, some significantly in the amount of oversight activities that they are funding uh, at their level, both in the management side as well as on the auditing uh, side. So that is a concern that they had uh, and we recommended to OMB that they clarify where administrative funds can be funded through the Recovery Act. There are a number of possibilities. There are also indirect cost rates in some of the existing federal programs. And so we were pleased that OMB and, and the uh, Vice President adopted our recommendation, and they're going to clarify that. The other recommendation we made to OMB was to uh, uh, modify the single audit process. This is the state audit audit of these uh, uh, departments, the state auditors. It's a very important tool, but unless it's changed, as Senator McCaskill mentioned in our last hearing, and modified uh, to allow for earlier testing of, of the program and to give some relief to the state auditors, it won't be a timely, effective tool as much as it could be to help with Recovery Act funding. Now, we're, our recommendations would mean the auditors would do some testing of internal controls in 2009 before a lot of the money is spent in 2010 and 11. So it's very important. OMB's acted positively there. We're hoping that they implement those changes. Uh, we also uh, made recommendations that OMB provide better uh, clarity on the methodologies used to estimate the number of jobs created and preserved, which is a very important uh, aspect of evaluating the impact of this program. And we also made recommendations that OMB move to improve the communications with the states to give them more timely notice of the availability of the money, uh, the application process. And importantly, a lot of states were concerned that they were not getting information about the amount of federal money that would f flow directly to localities within their state that would not come through the state agency so they wouldn't have a total picture that would impede their ability to assess the overall impact. So 
we made the recommendation to OMB that they provide that information to the states. They've agreed to do that. So in closing, uh, I just would, would say we've made a series of recommendations to OMB. Uh, they're acting on those recommendations. We're very pleased with their response and also would want to publicly thank all the state and local officials, including the associations uh, that are here today. But uh, we've get, uh, received very good cooperation in every state and locality that we've been in, as well as with our f federal officials. So we look forward to continuing our responsibilities under the Recovery Act, and we'll produce regular reports as required. And I'll be happy to take questions at the appropriate time, Mr. Chairman.